Good morning, I'm Alan. Today is all about the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and our lesson is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And I'm glad that you joined us, and I hope that you'll follow along with your Bible or a Kindle or a Bible app on your tablet or phone. And today, we are learning all about how Jesus warned his disciples throughout the Gospels, but especially in the last year of his life, that he would soon be betrayed, condemned, mistreated, and crucified. And he also spoke about his resurrection on the third day. Later, when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, he was presenting himself both as King and Messiah, and he was fully aware that just in a few days, Israel's rejection of him would end up at the cross. So Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, Matthew's Gospel beginning in verse 1, chapter 21, verse 1. When they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples. Well, the village of Bethpage was located on or near the southeast slope of the Mount of Olives, and it was less than a mile from Jerusalem, and it was close to the road that ran from Jericho to Jerusalem. Now, some interesting facts about the Mount of Olives. At its highest point, it, ra it raises or rises 2,700 feet above sea level, and it provides this, this spectacular view of Jerusalem and the Jordan River Valley and the Dead Sea. And at the time of Christ, the Mount of Olives was noted for the number of olive trees that were growing on the mountainside. Well, Jesus was also betrayed on the Mount of Olives right before his crucifixion. And it was the place from which the men of Galilee stood as they watched the resurrected Jesus ascend back up into heaven after his resurrection. Now, the Garden of Gethsemane was also located on the Mount of Olives. And all of today's lesson begins from the Mount of Olives. And Jesus gave instructions to two disciples. He sent them into Bethpage, and we're not told who these two disciples were. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 2 and 3. And he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord needs them, and he will send them on immediately. So the two disciples are sent out on a mission in verse 1. They're to go into this village opposite them, and immediately they will find a tied-up donkey and a colt. Now, Matthew's gospel is the only one that mentions two animals, a mother and her colt. Mark and Luke only mentioned the colt, since that was the animal that Jesus rode. But Matthew is emphasizing the colt had never been ridden before. And so it was helpful to bring the mother along to walk beside the colt to help keep it calm in the middle of the crowd. And so when the disciples found them, they were to untie both of them and bring them to Jesus. Now, Jesus understood that an owner or a caretaker or really anyone might ask these two men why they were untying these animals. And in case that happened, the disciples were to respond by saying, the Lord needs them. And the disciples were not stealing the animals. They were simply carrying out a plan that Jesus, no doubt, had already arranged. Besides, Jesus, as the creator, he owns everything, and he has the authority to use whatever he finds in his creation, including you and me. Matthew chapter 21, verses 4 and 5. 
Now this took place so that what was spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Matthew's gospel is that he refers repeatedly to prophecy being fulfilled. And since his primary audience was the Jewish people, he wanted to use the Old Testament Bible to convince them that Jesus was indeed the king, the long-awaited Messiah. Verse 5 is a quote from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, of a king coming. And the Jewish people expected a conqueror, a judge, to free them from foreign rulers. But Jesus came as a humble leader and servant. And the Bible tells us that after the resurrection and the ascension into heaven, that Jesus will return again. But the next time he returns, he's coming as a judge, riding a white horse, which is found in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. And he will be conquering all of his enemies. But he came first as a servant to reconcile, to make peace between God and humans. He will return as the mighty one, punishing those who refuse to be reconciled or accept him as Lord and Savior. Matthew, got, Matthew chapter 21, verses 6 and 7. So the disciples went and did just as Jesus instructed them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their cloaks on them, and he sat on the cloaks. So after the disciples received Jesus' instructions, they did exactly as he commanded. Now, this tells us there are times that we may not understand what Jesus wants us to do. He tells us to do something. He gives us the instructions to do it. And simple obedience is the best and only proper response. And so as God brings about his plan for our lives, we will begin to see the reasons why he has used us to do certain things. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 5 and 6, tells us that when the owner asked the disciples, they answered just as Jesus said and took the animals. Again, another indication that Jesus had already made prior arrangements with the owner. So the two, di two disciples bring the donkey and the colt, put their armor, outer garments on them. Jesus gets on the colt, and he rode the colt as Zechariah's prophecy had prophesied. And so this begins Jesus' royal entry as King of Kings into Jerusalem. For three years, Jesus had been providing evidence of who he was. But this was his official presentation to Israel as their Messiah. He offered himself for their acceptance, but knowing that they would reject his offer, on this day, he would also weep over the city, as Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 41 through 44 tells us. And he would also foretell of Israel's destruction because they failed to recognize that God had visited them. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 8 and 9. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Now the crowds were going ahead of him, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so as Jesus and his disciples began going down the mountainside from the Mount of Olives into the Kidron Valley, a crowd of people joined in this process, procession. They also spread their cloaks out on the road. And this was done as a way to honor royalty. 
And all these people were here in Jerusalem because it was the time of Passover and also the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of an Unleavened Bread was one of the three major feasts where all the adult males were to appear before the Lord. So the Jews traveled from all over Israel and all over the Roman Empire back to Jerusalem to celebrate this Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the crowds that were both behind Jesus and in front of Jesus were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. John's Gospel also tells us that the crowd also called Jesus the King of Israel. And so the people were calling on the God of heaven to save them now through this one that they were praising. Little did they know that Jesus would bring deliverance or salvation, not from the Romans, but from sin. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 10. Many in the city wondered what all the noise and celebration was about and exactly who they were celebrating. Though many people had seen Jesus' miracles and heard him teach, they still questioned his, his identity. They still didn't know who he was. And despite all the signs that verified Jesus' claim to be Messiah, most of the Jews in Jerusalem regarded him as no more, at, no more than a prophet or a teacher because they thought his being from Nazareth disqualified him from being anything more than that. So Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 11. And the crowds were saying, this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. See, Jesus made no attempt to come into town in disguise or quietly to avoid any confrontation. Instead, he entered the city in a very unconventional and a very public way, riding on a donkey, a colt, which is a symbol of, humili of humility. And all of this happened the way Jesus had planned it, the way that the scriptures had foretold it. And everything that happened in today's lesson is to meet the prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus knew his time had come. He knew exactly what would happen in a few days. He knew that he would be tortured and he would be killed and die on a cross. But this was his purpose for coming. So Jesus entered Jerusalem in a parade. And no one, ever more, no one more than him deserved this honor to be praised and to be glorified and to be honored with a parade. But the celebration was not for making Jesus ruler over Jerusalem. All of it was done to accomplish the plans of God the Father. And the amazing thing about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was that after the people in the crowd accepted him as the son of David, there were still many others who asked, who is this? And even yet today, there are still far too many people who are asking the same question. Who is this person? Who is this man? Who is this Messiah called Jesus? Are you one of those? I hope not, because that is the only way to obtain the promise of heaven and salvation only comes through the Son, Jesus. Let us pray. Father and Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus, your Son, to save us from our sins. 
May we always praise and honor him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.